And here we go again. This time we're going to be looking at a lesson that involves integrating PHP and MySQL. Take it away, Logan. At long last, the whole the main purpose of the series. Putting them together. Okay. So now, uh, in the last section, you saw we created that uh, that extra user for PHP to use. So now we're going to actually write uh, the st uh, what script is going to hold that information for PHP to use. So I'm going to open this up. I mean, this is my favorite text editor. A lot of people use either Notepad or Ultra Edit or PHP Edit. I like uh, Context because it can handle huge blocks of text easily. And where can you go get Context from for those that are uh, interested? Probably download.com. And that's the other thing I like about it. It's free. <laughs> we like free, don't we? Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is in PHP, I've got to uh, store that information like uh, what what because PHP needs to know what database it's going to be connecting to and what user to connect under. So I'm just going to open a uh, PHP tag real quick, drop down, and I'm going to create some variables to hold this data. So I'll, first, all I'll do is dollar sign db underscore host equals. Let me go turn on PHP. <laughs> syntax highlighting. Now this is very different from the standard like in inside of PHP ed and stuff. It's just I've gotten very used to this. So if you don't like it, just catch me on the forum sometime and I'll change if you really want to. <laughs> so anyway, okay, the host we're going to be connecting to is localhost because these scripts again are running on PHP that we have running on this machine. And something I w will point out while Logan's type typing those things in is that Right now, we're not going to start reviewing the things that we covered in the last particular VTM. I mean, we've already talked about PHP tags and putting those inside an HTML document. We also already talked about variables and, and some of these basic things. So uh, basically, we're just going to be covering new material. So if any of this seems kind of Greek to you, you need to go back to the very first PHP MySQL uh, CD or VTM and take a look at that. And again, this uh, data DB name or database name, uh, PHP does need to know what database to use. Kind of like when uh, just now when I loaded up MySQL, I told to use that MySQL database before I could work with it. And the last VTM we created a Buzz DB when we were testing uh, testing MySQL, so that does exist, and that's the one I'm going to be working in. So let me close that off and check some stuff. Okay, so. Now we've got some informa information established, but at this point, all this is variables. This would be a blank screen if we tried to load it. What this is going to be is a, uh, a single point for holding this stuff. Normally, okay, say if you just did this and later on you started, like, made the connection and so on and so forth, but then you made another script and you would have to copy this exact same information if you wanted to use the same database. But then let's say sometime you, someday you change the database out or move your scripts to another server and this information is no longer valid. Then you would have to go into each, each individual script and change those values. What I'm going to do is save this one script in, uh, in a certain location and then all the scripts that will have database access will, will use this script. There's, um, there's, fun there's a function called include and another one called require. They do the same thing except that require will, the script will fail if it can't get to this. So basically this is going to be its own PHP file. Any other PHP script that uses the database will load this file in. So that means if you had 100 scripts and they all use the database and they were all including this one, if you needed to change something, you change one script instead of 100. Absolutely. What he's doing right now is called being efficient. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out onto my. Let's see if I load up the K drive. Yeah in the webroot folder. I'm not going to throw it right at webroot. I'm going to create an extra folder and uh, you'll see this why I'm doing this in a minute. I'll call this colder, uh, <laughs> folder config. You can't be. You sound like me now. Let's go up under config and we'll just call this um, db underscore config dot php. And save that out. And now let's go ahead and actually load up a s or create a script to use it. Let me go ahead and close that out just to, well, I'll close that out in a second. Create a new script over here. And again, this and this script is actually going to connect to the database. So again, open a PHP tag, tab out a little. And now, like I said, okay, we've got this script over here. It's in the config folder. We're in a totally separate PHP script, but we need to basically, uh, we need to reference that in or include that or requ um, require. Uh, let's see. So the first thing I need to do is go and load that script up. So I'll use uh, require. Let me turn syntax on so I can see what I'm doing. Require, and then what do I want to require? All right. Now the thing is, 
where is exactly is the script located? Of course, it's up under the web root folder, but in order to access it, you need uh, you need to know exactly where it is. But what if you move this around or you don't know exactly what your uh, your root folder because it needs the whole path. It doesn't look at like your browser just uh, when you typed in localhost or 127.0.0.1, then that was your web root. This requires because this this um, when require runs to load in a file, it's not looking at the web server. It's looking at the machine's local hard drive. Now, in order to get this, we could just go and figure out exactly where that script is located, or we could use an existing Apache environment variable or a server variable that holds that. Whenever you're working with PHP, you always have the location that the script is in, which can be incredibly useful for making your scripts very easy to move around. This is where we'll, we'll get into a what's called a predefined uh, variable, and it's uh, it's called dollar sign underscore server. Um, and this is an array, uh, it's, which means it holds uh, basically multiple variables inside itself. And one of those is called document root. root. Now that holds the path to where this script is. When, when I save the script into web root, it's going to document root is going to hold all the path before that that leads to uh, to the uh, the web root folder. So now we've got the basic location of where we are. If we just said require uh, document root, then I'll use the dot, remember a uh, string concatenation, and then whatever at this point, once we're inside here, we're basically looking at files inside of web root. But remember I added that, uh, that config folder. So I'll go ahead and do forward slash config. So now we're in the config folder, and then that um, db config.php. So now we're letting uh, we're letting PHP fill in the path to our web root folder. Then we're going to go under config and load in this DB config PHP. And what that does for us is now we have those those variables established. We went through and set all this stuff. So now in just one line of code, and this would be the exact same line in other scripts, we have those variables established. So with that we have it's basically the same thing as if we had written this out inside the script. And uh, it will also, any when you require a script, it will basically include and run that script. So if I had like echoes over in the DB config, it would actually echo out. So now I, let's see, yeah, we're ready to go ahead and, tr and actually establish the connection. Now, um, we, the function we're going to be using to connect to the database is called MySQL underscore connect. That returns the, uh, the ID that links to a server. So we need to be able to store that so we can refer to it later. So I'll start a variable dollar sign connection equals the MySQL connect. So that way we'll have, whenever we need to refer to this MySQL connection, we'll, we'll refer to dollar sign connection. So dollar sign connection equals MySQL underscore connect and my uh, MySQL connect is going to need to take in um, a host, a user, and a password. Very similar to we've got our database host, our database user, and our database password here. So we're just going to use those variables instead of uh, typing in the values here. So the first it's going to be expecting is what host are we connecting to? So dollar sign DB host so that of course is going to ho hold localhost. We've got db user, uh, and uh, capitalization here is very important. You have to refer to variables by the same capitalization you used when you created them. So the user or a PHP, and the password. Now, um, let's see dollar sign db password. And we'll, so we've got all the information that it would need to make the connection here. This, uh, this would connect. But the thing is, uh, as it is now, um, we want to make uh, basically an exception like what to do if it can't connect. Because the database server could be down or it could have incorrect information here. So basically this here, this is trying to connect. But now we want something to do if it's, uh, if it's unable to connect. So after that, we'll, uh, bef and before the terminator, we'll add or um, die. Die is the same thing as exit. It causes the script to immediately terminate. And you can feed it some more, uh, s uh, like basically what to show when it dies. So die, and you can, uh, you can give it a string. And we'll say error connecting. You could put a. This is just something that something to 
show uh, the user if it is if the script is unable to connect. So we've got that. In other words, this would be echoed out in their browser. Right. Now there's there's other stuff. MySQL Connect actually will return warnings. Other than that, but I'll show how to how to use that and how to uh, silence that if you want to. So that if this runs uh, properly, that will actually establish a connection, and we've got a link to that connection stored in dollar sign connection. Right. So hopefully at this point, what you're seeing is when you use dollar db underscore host, dollar db underscore user, and dollar db underscore password. Go ahead and switch back over to the other tab. There you go. Those were the things that were stored right here in these variables: local host, PHP, and foo. So that's where, just so that you guys see how this is all starting to tie together, that's where it's pulling that information from and putting it into the function. Okay. And there was actually a second reason I've separated these files. If we didn't use this method of uh, establishing variables for these, we, what you could have done is simply typed out in double quotes, uh, localhost, typed out PHP, and foo. Now, the problem with that is you're in plain text, you're, you're typing out your password there. Now, normally, if, if PHP runs correctly, it will parse that out, and the web browser will never, or, uh, it won't be able to view source and see your password. Unless there's uh, some Apache settings got messed up, it, something could get messed up, and PHP not be called to parse the script. And in that case, all your <laughs> code could actually get shown out to the browser. And then all of a sudden, Joe Schmo has your all your information for logging yeah, into your database. You're kind of saying, "Hello, world. Here's my database information and whereas, my password." Yes. Whereas what would happen now is if PHP failed to run or failed to be called by Apache, they would just see that you're storing stuff in dollar sign DB user and DB password. They have no idea of what it is. And what we'll be doing in a minute is actually blocking this folder. We put this under that config folder. We'll actually be blocking that off of normal access, where PHP will be able to load files from there, but a web browser will not. So it'll be completely impossible for anyone to actually go in there and see your settings. Oh, yeah, baby. Now we're getting into some good stuff. All right, so we're establishing a connection, and what this will do is it will not get past this point. If this uh, connection is not made, it will stop here. So I'm going to add one extra line down here and have it echo something. Um, let's see, echo connection made. Or made, or successful, or whatever. Or made. <laughs> yeah. Made Basically, if it gets to this point, that means we actually did get the connection. If we don't get connection made, that means there was some kind of a problem. So with that, I'm going to close off the tag, pull that back, and I'm just going to save this as a, this is a temporary script. We probably won't be, we might refer to the code in here later so we don't have to type it back out again. But anyway, I'll go ahead and save this one out. Um, this one under webroot, because remember, uh, we're all, for the mo yeah, we'll be working with uh, any scripts we run, run will be under webroot. This config file is just for holding that extra DB config PHP script. So I'll just do um, temp con.php. Uh, so we're not going to be writing any more in the script. So I'll just go ahead and save out just so we can load up the browser and see if this works. So we've got that loaded there. I'll go ahead and bring up a web browser. CDP 127.0.0.1. So we'll be hitting localhost and then temp underscore con dot php connection refused is what happens this might be a setting on our end might be able to fix this real quick this is just okay you, sh you don't have to do this it's just some funkiness that's we've been having with our browser let me see if I can correct that real quick and say this so again http temp con hmm interesting this is what happens when you have a machine that hasn't been reformatted in forever. Watch this. Go back into those options again. Options, and options, connections, line settings. Uncheck, click OK, click OK, don't close the browser, now go back in. Nope. I had to reload the browser last time. Because, well, if I open a new browser, maybe it'll... Nope, I didn't want that. Okay. I would be mad if that was it. Okay, yes. <laughs> Darn it, I don't believe I did that. Yeah, um, do HTTP forward slash forward slash. It actually is two forward slashes. <laughs> All right, and That's great. so, okay, now the script is running here. It just goes to show we're just humans like everyone else. <laughs> All right, so this fatal error here is because my SQL content is me not being able to type. So let me go and um, correct that. So my SQL connect. Yeah, so spelling's not. 
Probably take that pretty out. pretty important here. Go back to the browser, and let me refresh. Connection made. Yay. Okay, now, so everything worked amazingly other than that, but what would have happened if you had, like, it didn't have the right host or, let's say, the, uh, the wrong password. Say we're missing a zero on that. We save that config script out. So now it's going to load up this DB config, and it's going to have the wrong password stored in dollar sign DB password. So let's see what happens. Refresh. Ooh, warning, access denied. Now, you get uh, some, so you get the warnings, two warnings, and then here's our own little message. Now, this, these warnings are great for when you're trying to debug your script. Um, let me go see. But not necessarily great when you want to hand this off to the user. Right. If you, uh, you don't want all this junk to appear and uh, them wonder what in the world you're doing, say you just wanted to have your own custom error message and not show them like what the actual warnings were. You can have the uh, f any function inside of PHP, you can, it can be told to be silent, as in if it, it runs into a problem, it just won't say anything. It still won't work. It just won't uh, show those warnings. You put the at symbol in front of your function, and that makes it silent. It won't echo out warnings now. So if I save this out, go back and refresh it, it's error connecting, but not all that stuff is trying to send before. Very, very nice. So now if we go back in, and then we go back to the DB config, and we actually correct this, save it out, refresh, and connection made. Excellent. Now, do we want to go ahead and show them what we can do with that little folder that you created? Oh, yes. The, uh, the fact that um, you could still access that. Now, if it's, it's, it's secure, eh, secure, as long as PHP is, is running correctly, as in if we, if we loaded that script up here, it would be just a blank screen because it's creating variables but not doing anything with them. Now, what we can do to make sure that it's totally secure and that you don't have access, like, let me, okay, let me go ahead and type this in then. Config db config.php. It's, uh, it's basically letting you in that script actually ran. So if someone could find some way of getting that script to give, you, give the variables, then they'd have access to your, to your system. What I'm going to do is go or to your database, that is. Uh, database, yep. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have Apache uh, basically disallow access to the whole config folder Sounds so that good. someone from a web browser won't even be able to get into the config folder. Cool. Now, to do that, I'm going to go back to my text editor, open, let me go up a level to program files, go into the Apache group. This is like, remember when we first had to edit that HTTPD config file to make PHP work in the first place? This is similar to that. We're changing the settings. So inside of Apache, inside conf. Let me drop this down to all files so I can see the httpd.conf file. Let me load that in. And, and this is the file that I spent some time working in inside BTM issue number one. Right. So let me go and scroll down and bear with me for a second as I try to get through a zillion lines. And let's see. All right. So here we had, up here we told it that the web root was that, that K drive web root. We said to look for here because remember when Apache initially installs, it let puts the web root to HT, HT doc. So we changed that ourselves and pretty much left everything else alone. But now that's so that's basically how you use the uh, Apache's directory tag inside of its uh, conf file. We're going to create one of these tags on our own. So since I dislike typing so much, I'm going to copy this line. <laughs> I'm going to go below. So it's okay, we're out of that the web root directory. Paste it. And this time we're going to be working in K web root conf yeah, config and let me close that tag so don't get into trouble. And and yes, I'm the master of copy and paste. So so we're going to specify some stuff inside of uh, K inside of config. We're going to say den den deny from all. No one's allowed to get anything inside this folder if they're running through a pat or going through Apache. So um, let me go ahead. Might just add a comment. If you go in here and edit, this is a big file. If you go in here and edit it, it is uh, it is a good idea to go and comment what you do so you can find it later. So keep people out of database config, something like that, just so you can see it later. Yep, looks good. So deny from all. I'll save that out. Now I need to restart Apache so it loads this config file back in. So I'll go back to my desktop, which is about a zillion layers down. Okay. And I will have to restart Apache. This, shor this uh, shortcut is normally found in the start menu under, uh, under Apache. I just copied it here to make it quicker. So I'll restart Apache.
loads up, restarts. Now, if I bring my web browser back up, you remember this uh, script loaded. Again, it's blank because all it did was set variables, but let me try to go to it again. Forbidden. Very Don't have access. Nice. So now, like no one, no matter how much they know about how you have your uh, how or how you're set up, they still can't get your passwords. So that um, that pretty much concludes setting up a uh, establishing a MySQL connection from inside of PHP. So I guess what we could do though is a real quick recap. Basically, what Logan did is he created a global PHP file, if you would, and he put it up under a very special folder that he just showed you how he was able to block access from people getting into. But PHP can still get into it, and inside that special folder, what he did is he just basically uh, had a had four different variables set inside of a PHP tag uh, for the DB host, DB user, password, and name, and he assigned those in there. And you know, it's a good idea to keep this information out of the files that are going to be available to everyone. You know, that's going to be basically accessing these files with their browser. Then he went in. If you go ahead and switch over to the other one, then he went in and actually wrote the start of his his HTML file, if you would, that's going to contain, or PHP file, that's going to contain the database connection stuff and working with any data, where he just simply had a, uh, a PHP tag, and inside of it, he's got the require and uh, information for the actual config file, which is going to make that little uh, that other PHP file run so that we'll have yeah. access to these variables inside this uh, script right here. And then from there, he just simply connected to the database, and inside there, he showed you how we now have access to the variables $db host, et cetera, et cetera. And he t showed you at the end how we could put or die. In other words, if things did not, if, this, if it did not successfully connect, then we'd return back the error connecting. And you guys also saw that it also returned back the warnings and the issues that we had with connecting. And by putting the at symbol before the actual uh, connect command, that it would just kind of silence all of that. And then finally, he talked about how the script would not con would not continue if that had uh, basically died out on us. So we he put in the echo connection made so that we could see that indeed it was continuing on, and we did actually make the connection. And then uh, from there, he uh, he basically made our uh, our little config folder unaccessible to other people, and that's about it. Okay, yep. so that concludes this section right here. We'll see you in the next. Thanks a lot.